Hello and welcome to Stocks and Under. My name is Mark Kennis, and today we're joined by Kobe Hanok, the CEO of Webit Nano. Good morning, Kobe. Hi, Mark. Um, big news you announced today. You signed Texas Instruments, the biggest analog semiconductor manufacturer in the world. Massive news. Talk to us about Texas Instruments. I'm sure a lot of people in Australia know the company, but talk to us about that company and, and what they do specifically. Well, TI, uh, as it's uh, known, is uh, a very well-known company. Uh, you know, I remember as a, as a kid in high school uh, using their calculators already. Uh, and yes, they are a very important company. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're something like number 30 on the NASDAQ list. Uh, you know, a company with a market cap of over 250 million U.S. Uh, billion, I'm sorry, U.S. Really? dollars. So definitely one of the biggest uh, semiconductor players. Uh, we're very proud to have them uh, join uh, the WeBit Club. And uh, this was a very long uh, and detailed uh, negotiation. And, and it's great to have them on board. Uh, TI has uh, 80,000 products in their uh, price book. So, you know, you can understand just how big they are. And this is very important. Obviously, not all the products uh, will be using RERAM, but definitely we expect uh, quite a few of them to, uh, to end up being with RERAM. Uh, so this is a very important uh, step forward uh, in the market. And I think... Uh, TI together with uh, with OnSemi is uh, is really going to help uh, all the others that are sitting on the fence for so long to uh, to move forward. All right, that's good news. So if you look at the uh, the revenues for TI through uh, the third quarter of, of 2025, so the, the 12 months to the third quarter, that that amounts to 17.3 billion US, which is a, mm -hmm. a very sizable number. That's split up into analog, which is by far the largest division, and embedded processing. Um, so this is where embedded processing is where uh, they expect to integrate RERAM, if I'm not mistaken, and they say it's at their advanced manufacturing node. With and then if you look at on uh, if you look at the details uh, of TI, that's about 28 nanometers. Um, can you explain to us how these uh, products? And you mentioned 80,000 of them, but specifically for this division within TI, how where RERAM, uh, RERAM comes in and how these products benefit from your technology. So yeah, re TI is a very big company with a lot of activities. Um, uh, they asked us not to talk about specific geometries and the embedded side of things is, is uh, what we talk about all the time. We need to remember, and I mentioned it many times, uh, that today, even the analog side of things uh, is becoming smarter, like uh, power management, which used to be just simple analog, is today becoming smart power management where you need an MCU, a microcontroller. To, um, to control how fast you charge and, and you know, things like that. So things are somewhat uh, merging uh, in, in different spaces of analog. And uh, that's where OnSemi, which is also basically an analog company, came to Webit. Uh, and if you remember, I showed the YOLO report with the, the exceptional growth expected for RERAM. And uh, on that slide, you could see that the first market that YOL is expecting to grow in, uh, that YOL is expecting RERAM to grow in, is uh, the analog market. And, and now you can see on SEMI and, and TI, it kind of follows the YOL uh, expectations. Um, and so we, we definitely are expecting to see nice growth in the analog market. We're also obviously talking to a lot of people that are in the, in the digital side of things. And, and, uh, we, we believe that, uh, we'll also, uh, be growing into, uh, fabs in, in the digital, digital side as well. Right. And so if you look at TI's, specifically TI's embedded processing, that's highly geared towards automotive, towards industrial. And of course, on <laughs> semi, on semi, um, they're highly geared towards automotive as well. Talk mm -hmm. to us specifically why um, your technology is so well suited to automotive uh, in particular. Not just automotive, but in as, uh, automotive as a, a, a sort of focus segment for you. Yes. Yeah, so... 
Uh, actually, uh, both automotive and analog, uh, WeBit is, uh, or our reRAM is, uh, is really tailored for these things. Uh, we announced earlier this year that we achieved the AECQ100 qualification, which basically shows that we can operate at 150 degrees for 10 years. Uh, since then, we actually even showed people that were wanted to see that we can achieve higher temperatures. And uh, our technology is very, um, uh, very suited for these high temperatures, which are a critical requirement for automotive. So, so that's one, one angle. Uh, the other one uh, regarding the analog side of things, and, and maybe I should have clarified it a little bit more in the previous question, uh, but uh, when analog wants to become smart analog, uh, it basically needs a, a microcontroller. Uh, what happens is if you, a microcontroller has to have non-volatile memory. And so if you try to put in flash next to your um, uh, analog circuit, into, uh, next to power management or whatever other analog circuit, um, that will cause issues because flash is front end of line technology. And it sits right next to the analog design and it interferes with the analog. So you can't actually have your uh, most uh, optimal analog design when you have flash there. Uh, since our reram is back end of line, it can come in the top metal between the metal layers and it you know doesn't impact the the design doesn't even know that it's there basically so this is a real advantage that we have in the analog space today the solution with flash is most likely to be just doing a two chip solution you just have one chip with the analog and another one with the mcu and flash which obviously is more costly and difficult etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, in the case of RERAM, it's a much cheaper solution. It's a one-chip ch solution, very simple to manufacture. So for analog companies, having, uh, having RERAM is a huge advantage over flash. And then when these companies are focused on automotive, the fact that we can deal with very high temperatures is another big advantage. And that's really why uh, I believe why these companies are coming to WeBit. All right. Um, so next question, I'm not sure how much you can talk about that, given you know, all the, uh, the, the confidentiality um, agreements in these, in these overall agreements. But can you talk a little bit about the, the timelines for, for the design work, the design in, uh, tape out manufacturing potentially later on, of course. Uh, is there anything you can say about that with, specifically with regards to TI? Um, I won't go into TI specifically, but you know, we did announce, actually, I think it was already two years ago, even at, at the AGM, I showed the timelines that are normal with uh, these kinds of fabs that you need to go through technology transfer, uh, which can take, you know, nine to 12 months. And then we go into manufacturing and we go to testing and eventually to qualification and so on. So, you know, the timeline uh in in general it can be order of magnitude of about two years or so we can you guys can see it already what when we did it with skywater and and uh you know now with db high tech etc how how this thing works uh so without going into the details of ti i can say that ti is really pushing us uh on some of the technical features and we will be working with them on get you know making our reram even better and, and that's another big advantage of working with these big guys. They, they really push you to the limits and, and, you know, eventually you end up having a better product. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited about the work with them and, um, you know, starting, starting this big project. Okay. If, if I look, as a follow up question on this specifically, Kobe, if I look at what's happening with OnSemi, is it fair to say that with each new sort of bigger deal that you announce um, and each sort of new customer that comes on board, it, these timelines sort of shrink a little bit? Um, not that much. Uh, there is a lot of work uh, that is done uh, specifically with, the, with the, the new customer. Every customer has their own particularities in, in the manufacturing process. Uh, they have some slightly different uh, manufacturing line, different machines or different procedures. And, you know, the tailoring of things there 
is um, you know you, we really need to go through a, a detailed uh, process with them. We are looking at how we can you know automate as much as possible, learn as much as possible, actually you know use AI to uh, to help us uh, uh, build uh, more. Uh, again, I guess the word is automatic or, or uh, shorten things. So we are looking at that, but um, we can't um, uh, we can't really uh, at this point. It's it still takes a lot of time. Right. Okay. All right. So um, with TI and with on semi about a year ago, you signed number one and number five in the analog space. Uh, the others there are Infineon from Germany, uh, SD Micro in France, um, and uh, analog devices. So two, three, and four. Uh, and you talked about this in the in I think question number one just a minute ago. Um, how how would, does this affect conversations? You know, not not specifically. You of course you can't mention names, but with companies that are haven't signed yet, but might be uh, might be sort of looking at that. Uh, well, I think you know if you, you know, people who who heard previous uh, presentations that I gave, and I was talking about the book Crossing the Chasm and and getting to the tornado phase, and and part of it is uh, you know when when you start having several key players in in a domain. Uh, the other players uh, look and, and say, oh, my God, you know, this guy's using it, that guy's using it, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to fall behind. So I believe that the impact of having two such dominant players in this uh, domain uh, will help, I, I believe, I hope that the other players will see this and realize the risk, the perceived risk, and I keep saying that, the perceived risk level is going down. And that's where we can actually uh, make progress. So I, I hope that uh, we can make more progress in this field now. And uh, again, as, as you all was predicting, analog will be the first domain to really uh, adopt RAM and run forward. I think we're seeing it happening now. All right. Last question, Kobe. Um, you also announced today that you'll be uh, start you'll start to give guidance from now on. So and for FY26. <laughs> Uh, you're guiding towards 10 million in revenues, uh, 10 million dollars for uh, for this financial year. If we look at the, um, the and this is not revenue, this is cash flow coming out of on semi mm -hmm. that you reported quarterly. Um, it, some might say, well, 10 million actually it, it sounds good, but it might actually be a little bit conservative. So, um, given the fact that you now signed TI and 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 hopefully there's some more companies coming before the end of the financial year, what's the scope in your view at the moment to uh, to see some upgrades to their guidance? Defining uh, the guidance in in a company like Webit at the state that we are is a big challenge. Uh, we are um, now in uh, in this phase where every deal has a big impact, and and as we sign them, uh, you need to remember also we recognize revenue over time. So if a project we just talked about it will take roughly two years or however long it takes. Uh, we don't recognize the revenue when the cash comes in. We take the, all of the payments that are related to that project and spread it prorated based on the efforts, et cetera, et cetera, over the timeline of that project. Uh, and, and that's how we report the revenue. So we said, uh, you know, over 10 million. And uh, right now, that is uh, the number that uh, we believe we're going to have. Uh, you know, uh, if we close more deals faster, if there's more stuff, you know, there obviously will be correction to the guidance. But, uh, you know, this is this is the guidance that we believe right now in. All right. Well, excellent, Kobe. Thank you very much for uh, joining us um, again. Congratulations. And I think yeah, 2026 is off to a very good start for you guys. Yeah, thank you.